Okay, guys, welcome back to Strong Opinion Hibs. This is episode number 21. I'm Calvin, and as always, I'm joined by Charlie. How are you doing, Charlie? I'm good, mate. Hi, how are you? I am doing good, mate. Just enjoying the nice weather in the garden and that, and uh, getting excited about the European tie and things like that. Uh, had a, obviously had a good weekend away to Wraith as well, so it was decent, mate. Aye. Doing well? Aye, it was good. So, nice, nice to be in the ground again, eh? It was really nice, mate. It's the first time I've actually ever been to Wraith Rovers, as I was saying to you. Um, it's a nice wee ground, like I liked that a lot. Um, mm. it was really, it was really cool actually. Just what well, I know it wasn't the home, but obviously, but like walking up the steps and just seeing like the pitch, it was like wow, I've not actually seen this in so long. You know, like coming out like the uh, up the stairs actually onto the onto the stand was pretty cool. Like I did like that, like seeing the boys warm up and all that as well. It was good. I totally. Yeah, it was good. Nice, nice to be back at the football. I uh, it felt like real life again, eh? Like it did. It Aye. felt like real life. Um. Because what we've went through has been absolutely crazy, eh? Mm-hmm. Aye. So I, I enjoyed that, mate. I also enjoyed um, seeing some of the folk that we've met, like, doing the podcast. Like, obviously, that boy John Wallace came up and spoke to us. Ah, that was right. really nice. Just, like, mm-hmm. making, a few fri- making a few friends through it, and that was really cool. Uh, he came up at half time and spoke to us and that, eh? And, um, aye, it was good, mate. I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed being back inside the stadium. Uh, seeing obviously Lewis McKinnon was there as well when he on another oh, one of our mates who listens to the podcast now, so it was really cool actually. Um, so what was your round, round uh, sum it up in one word, mate? Rafe Rovers away, uh, Friday night beat them 3 1. Um, how would you sum it up in a word? Uh, immense would not, and that's just because we were there. Um, you know, we could have, I, I think 3 1 was a fair result, and um, we were very Aye. good. We're very, very good Friday night, I felt. But I it meant to be there. So that I'll go with that. I think I think my word would be surreal. Mm. It felt really strange being back in the stadium. Like it did feel strange at the at the start because it felt like felt like I'd never been away, which was Aye. cool. I liked that. It was like once you seen like the them running out and that and applauding the fans and that and they were all like in their positions and that for the kickoff, I thought, Oh god, like it feels like I'd never been away. Aye. Like I, I did that, I really enjoyed that. It felt really surreal, it felt really strange. Mm. Considering that I haven't been there in over like five hundred days, and that like it was, it was however long it was, it was just raj. Um, but it was it was a, a surreal feeling seeing Hibs scoring that and like everyone cheering aye, and that. Aye, it was I good. liked that a lot, man. It was really cool. Um, was there any players that sort of impressed you during the match? Uh, Kyle McGinnis definitely had one of his best games for Hibs on Friday. I felt, um, and Josh Doig as well. He looked fantastic down that left that left side of the pitch. Um, so they two and then. I was really impressed by Mackay when he came off the bench um, on, during the second half. And one, the other, the wee bloody Bradley, Stevie Bradley, who got the second goal, he looked good as well. So the four of them, very good. Um, I, there was, I think they all played they all played relatively well, um, except maybe a few that, you know, probably should have done a wee bit better, but it's only pre-season, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, I agree. I mean, I thought Porteous was outstanding, eh? Like, first half an hour, first half, Aye. I thought it was like a... It's like Prime Sergio Ramos, the way he was controlling <laughs> the back the back four right. and shouting and that. And Kenny was always looking for a pass. Um, he got up and got his goal well as well. I think it was um no saying it was a real statement of intent in that to sort of solidify his place in the team because he's already sort of there. But you know, there's been a lot of like his head could have been turned a wee bit with the transfer right. rumors to Gal to Galatasaray, and um it's not fair about you. Who's the other team that's in for him? Uh oh yeah, Bajiktas. Bashik Tass, aye, that's right. I sorry, I've no that all, all that clued up on Turkish football. But I knew Galatasaray and that were in from. So to be honest with you, being that young, like that could have really turned your head. But I thought I totally put in a put in a solid performance. Like mm-hmm. yeah, I actually, I actually thought he looked really good. Looked like he'd matured quite a bit. Aye. Um I thought the goalie had a good game, Macy. He was all right. He just the way he comes and claims the ball. Aye. Like he's so commanding in that box. See, like it's been a it's been a while since like Ken. You're you're defending a corner and it just the goalie just plucks it out there like nine times out of ten, like it's really, really, really good. That like, was really good. that was good to see because you know we've never really had a tall keeper that commands his box at corners and that. So that was um, I, I, there was that one shot that Rafe had that he spilt onto the mind on top of the goal. I'm like oh, ah, good. a bit shaky. Like, yeah, but that was the only time, maybe other than their goal, but their goal wasn't it wasn't his fault at all. So, um, mm-hmm. so I he played really well. Uh, he played really well, and I thought guys like him, um, like you said, McGinnis and all that were good as well. And Josh Doig was good doing that wing. Boyle looked good. Mm. So strange seeing like Kevin has been that in the flesh for the first time, eh? Uh, yes. I that's was thinking I've that ever seen him play for Hibs, like that was aye. crazy. 
Um, took his goal really well, really well. Aye. Set, third um, goal was pick of the bunch. Aye. I think my most favourite bit of the match, though, mate, was when we made the video. <laughs> The Hi. club put out the video at the end of the match <laughs> and it was um, the interviews and things like that and you can see us clapping and applauding the, the team and that. That was really cool. Uh, it, was also, <laughs> it was also nice to give Berra a tight eh? Aye, he didn't half get it tight. Like, hey, every time he touched the ball, it was boo. Which was, uh, <laughs> I'm not saying he took it well, but he didn't. He, you could tell he was a bit angsty at times with it. Kind of, he wasn't obviously Aye, really enjoying it. Was, uh... <laughs> It's just part and parcel playing for Hearts, though, eh? You're going to get that. It'd be the same if one of our boys played for Rafe and they played Hearts. Aye, aye, aye. Nah, he took it. He just... I, I thought Jimmy McDonald took it pretty well, the goalie. Aye, aye. Um, he was a Raj man. Like, he was coming over to warm up at half... Was it half time? Aye. I think, he was warming up the... I think he was warming up the other goalie at half time. And he was, like, jumping forward to the Hibs fans, like, wow, I can't, like, he was <laughs> got to go for it. He was quite funny, like, to be fair to him. Yeah, he took it quite well. Everyone was booing him in that eh? but then he was obviously a bit of knob when he done the five one. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> ah, it was a, I mean, it was a good way to wrap up preseason, though. Eh? We've had Kenway beat Arsenal, got beat off Accrington, Drew with Stoke, beat Wraith, Kenneth's four, and then obviously the development team won. Did they won both of them? Eh? Ah, they beat the Civil Service Strollers. I think it was five three, and they beat. Eh, sorry, they drew with them. Um, ah, sorry. That they drew with Dunbar two two, which was which was good as well. Aye, so it's, um, it's been a good good pre-season, mate, and it, I think it uh, gets us ready for Thursday. What do you, what are you thinking about Thursday, Jink? Do you think we'll battle them, or do you think it'll be a tight game? Or? I think it'll be a tight... I think it'll be... I, th- I definitely think we'll win. I think we've got a bit of a good enough squad in that. Like I do th- I do think this round tends to be easier Aye. than the next round. Um, I don't, I don't expect many sort of... Um, I don't. I don't really expect much of a challenge, or but I do. I do think we should beat them quite comfortably. But I also don't want to go in thinking like that because no, of course, can the worst can happen. You can you seen it with that um, the Welsh team was it St Normans or something or whoever. Ah, they, they, beat they beat Kelly. Aye, they beat Kelly a couple of years ago. So freak things can happen. Eh? And I think, mm-hmm. I think if that happened, it would really shake the boat with a lot of fans. But nah, I think I think we'll do them, mate. Um, to be honest with you, I've had a bit of a look at them. Um, they're they're not a bad team. Um, Santa Coloman, I think their name is. They're, they're not a bad team. They've won, they've won the um, Andorran League for the last six years. Um, right. Well, they never, they never won it this year, but they won it six years prior on the trot. And they've won that. They've won the, their equivalent of the Scottish Cup ten times as well, which is the most. They're, they're the most successful team in Andorra, and they've only been about for thirty-five years. So they're still right. relatively new in that. And I think Hank Hibbs will, you know, Hank Hibbs, Hibbs have definitely got enough. Oh, yeah, right. I think it'll, I think it'll probably be like a pre-season game. Um. Yeah, I expect Hibs to win it, mate. Three or four nil. Um, I, I, I was, I, I think five nil Hibs. I think we'll just, I think we'll just be too good for them on the night. And then I think when we go over there, okay, I think we'll do the same over there. So I think I'll be as comfortable I, as the Runovic game the other year, the Pharaohs team. So I'm not, I, I'm not worried about it. I think, like you say, it probably is an R two preseason games because you know mm-hmm. we should, we should be too good for them, but. Stranger things have happened. Mind Hearts got beat off that Maltese team, so it's no Aye. unheard of. And Rangers got beat off Progress for Luxembourg Pace, so it's no unheard of. But I think we're too good for them. I think I think we'll be too good for them. Um, we've got a cracking team this year, and I'm really looking forward to it. And I, as I said, mate, I think I think we'll do them. Mate. I think the players I are really looking so. forward to it too. It looks like it. Yeah, I think there'll be a lot of like squad rotation in that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I do. I do think quite a few players will get get a shot on that. Like we will see the likes of Dre Wright, McGinnis. You know, p- people that are on sort of the cuff of the first team. Uh, I definitely expect to see that. Um, so I sort of wraps up pre season. Talk a wee bit about the European game. What are your sort of expectations for Europe this year then, and the season ahead in terms of the league and the cups? We'll start. We'll start with Europe. What What's your Aye. sort of expectations? Do you expect us to get any of the group stages? Uh, I'd I'd hope so, mate. Um, you know. The the first round is obviously, you know, you've got your minnows of European football there, but when we get through to the next round, it's a bigger game. Like it's a uh, Rijeka for mm-hmm. Croatia, and um, I'll just check who the other team is. Hibs tweeted it yesterday, I forget. But you know, they these are when the the games start getting a bit more difficult. You know, we had Astaras triple us the other year, and they're not obviously a, a big European team, but it's can we never we we did struggle against them to get through, and then we obviously got beat off. Was it Molda the round after? Ah, uh, they were they were just a class above, I think. Eh? So, Ken, it's no. Uh, it's no Holland it's was not, the difference in that game. Aye, 
at Haaland, that's <laughs> right. Um, it's uh, Gazira United from Malta or Rijeka from Croatia in the next round. So they are, Ken, they're obviously both decent teams that, that are in this competition. So I, I would, you know, mate, Rijeka would be the team that we want to avoid because I think they're a relatively good team in the Croatian standpoint. So I, w- I would think we'll get to the playoffs. Um, I think the playoffs are obviously when, you know, your Tottenham's and your Roma's come in. So I'd even take a wee glamour tie like that because St. Johnston have got PSV or Galatasaray, Ken. That's a massive game mm. for them. So, and the Europa League. Game, so, yeah. Ken, you're, you're hoping to get these big teams because we'll, we'll sell out, you know, obviously I'll not be a full crowd, but Ken, you're looking for gate receipts and all that. But I, I think, I think it's not too much of an ask to get to the playoffs, mate. I don't think we'll get to the groups. Um, I just, I don't think we've got enough squad depth to make it to the groups. Um, but I, I'd, I'd be happy with playoffs. Um, but, I, like I said, I don't think we'll get to the groups. What are you thinking for Europe? Yeah, I think that would be an achievement to get to the playoffs. Um, it would obviously be a massive achievement if they got to the group stage, like a massive, massive achievement. But right, back on me. So I think it would be interesting seeing the team play twice a week, but I also think that, um, I don't know how that will obviously affect our league campaign because the league's going to be quite stronger next year. I think Aberdeen will be rejuvenized, rejuvenized and I think also Hearts, um, obviously Hearts are always a strong team. Regardless, you know, so it's a tough, tough game for us with the Derby sense and that as well. So, be interesting, mate. But um, I think, I think, I think we'll get through this round, and I think next round will be a battle, and then we'll just see what happens after that. To be honest, I'm not that educated on the teams that are that are in the next round or the next the game round, so it's, I'm probably not the best person to talk about it. But I'm not sure, mate. Eh? We'll just get a bash. But I'm excited. I'm excited for the ride, and I'm looking forward to it. And I think this could be a good stepping stone for us to build upon. Mm-hmm. And sort of, you know, it could be quite an attract. Could make the, the club become more attractive if players are like, oh, I want to play in Europe. And like Ken, this should be the level that we're now consistently at, where we are in this Europe, this new European Conference League, and we're actually right. are competing and things like that. Like, then that could attract quite, quite a few good players. Uh, totally I'm really looking mate. forward to that, mate. Uh, so, what's your short expectation for the league campaign? Then, obviously, we finished third last year, first time we've done it in sixteen years, and um, we've only done it three times, I think, in the last forty or fifty years. So that was obviously some achievement. How we reached one cup semi final and one cup final. I mean, looking back and it, obviously the cup the cup runs ended in disappointment. Um, we're still had a really good league campaign. Turned over Aberdeen right. away from home the first time in years. How are um, you know, what's your sort of thoughts? What how do you how do you build upon that? Because it was obviously a, a, a successful season last season. It was successful, mate. Regardless of what other Hibs fans will tell you. Um, because you didn't finish third in the league that often if you're hips. But I would I would hope that we're going to build on that and finish third again. Um, because we we've not really been in much of a rebuild. Um, you know, there's been a couple of players that have left, but they've all except Rocky, they've all been on the fringes of the team anyway. Right. Uh, maybe well, Jackson Irvin was only till here till the end of the season, so I wouldn't really count him as leaving mm-hmm. the club per se. But um I think I do think though that. You know, third's not a uh, not too distant a goal. I think we can um, we can aim for third again, mm-hmm. and I th- I think um, we just we probably just need one or two more players to come in. But we'll probably talk about um, players coming in a wee bit. But I I think I think third is probably a realistic target again. And um, I we need to just start making our making Easter Road our sort of more of a fortress because we were good away from home last year, but home. Home was where we sort of slipped up a wee bit, wasn't it? So, yeah, it'd be interesting with the fans back as well, and to see like what impact that has on the team. Because obviously Aye. last year there was no fans, and you know it was obviously I guess almost like training matches for the for the players and that without the fans. But Aye. um it would have been interesting last season to see whether they would have finished third if like the pressure of the fans and that would have got on their back, or you know because they're probably able to cancel out that noise a little bit more with just being online. Aye. Um I, I think for us we have to obviously build upon what we've already got there. So I think third is realistic. I th- didn't get me wrong, I think it'll be tough. And I think if they don't get it, a lot of folk will be unhappy. And mm-hmm. maybe fairly so, but I think you have to be realistic as well and think, yes, we're a good team, but this is like, you know, last season was probably our best season, obviously our best season for a long time. Right. And just just g- give them a bit of time because they're going to be coming up against better teams like Hearts. They're going to be coming up against, obviously, Celtic look a lot better this season. Rangers are obviously better. Um, same with Aberdeen. Aberdeen have made a few good signings in that as well. So 
you know, the teams, the team around about us and that are, are, are good as well. So I think third or even fourth, fourth would be fine. Um, I know some folk will think that's accepting mediocrity, but I think still being in the top half of the table and competing at the top will be will be really good. And I think a few derby results and it'll, it'll really come to playing the big teams will really decide where we finish. Yeah, but I think I'd be happy with third or fourth and a, a, a decent cup run. What do you think? Would you think Jack Ross and the team um, haven't had the disappointment of obviously falling short last year in the cups? What sort of impact do you think that'll have? And also, just to add in, seeing the success that St Johnston have had in, what, winning both cups, I don't think beforehand a lot of other teams thought that was realistic. No. I think you used to think you'd be lucky if you won one, but the fact they won two in the one season, do you think that'll spur other clubs on to maybe maybe focus on trying to win the Cups rather than the league? Because obviously a lot of teams like Aberdeen and that are probably not going to win the league, but could potentially win the Cups. What, what's your sort of thoughts on all that? Again, it's a lot to take in. <laughs> no, I think um, I think you're right, mate. You know, we've never seen anyone do the Cup doubles and other, outside the old firm since 1984-5. So it's not... It doesn't happen that often, mate. So I think it's going to give a lot more clubs more, you know, potential. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the word? Motivation. That's the word. Motivation to try and, you know, follow what St. Johnson have done. And I, I think we, I think we should be aiming to win a cup every season. You know, it's it's obviously yeah. it's obviously disappointing that we got beat in the semi of St. Johnson and the final of St. Johnson and the semi the season before of Hearts, but. Again, it's you know we should we should be aiming to get to the final of every cup competition, mate. And you know I do mm-hmm. wonder though, like going back to the whole St Johnston debate, had had we got beat off Rangers, would there have been the same reaction? Again, or Celtic, or I think maybe it's because it's St Johnston the way the fans are a bit unhappy. But you know I'm mm-hmm. I I think we should be pushing for pushing for at least one of the cups. Um, hopefully both. Um, but I. I think it's. I don't think it's an unrealistic target to try and win a cup every year. No, I agree with you. I think. I think it's a hard thing to do. I think. I do think it's hard, but I do think that the cup. I think the cup, cup competitions might be a bit, not more competitive there, but, but I think. I think so the fact that St Johnson have done a double of, has opened a lot of people's eyes to think. Oh, oh Christ, like, you know, I didn't think that was really on the cards for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. I think them doing it have probably just opened up a lot of teams' eyes to think, Chris, we're obviously not going to win the league, but like, why don't we focus on the Cups? Yeah. Um, I don't know if other teams will think like that or whatever, but um, there's obviously a lot more incentives than that that come with finishing higher up the league in terms of like money value and that as well. But oh, totally. you know, silver, silverware is more important to me. <laughs> <laughs> but aye, no, interesting conversation, mate. Um, what would you say is unacceptable in terms of fans, like unacceptable place to finish this year? I mean, I think would I'd, you be happy with a fifth place finish? Nah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be, to be honest. I just think because, well, for one, we've not we've not really lost a lot of our key players, other than our mm-hmm. keeper. So I, I would say we've got the third best squad in the league. Um, some would disagree with that, but I think Aberdeen's an aging squad. You know, they brought in Scott Brown, who's thirty-five, Declan Gallagher, who's thirty-one, and Jet, who's thirty. You know, they're old. They're older players for our league. And yes, they come with experience mm-hmm. and whatever. But I, I would say fifth, fifth's unacceptable in my eyes. I think mm-hmm. because it's what Rangers, Celtic, Hibs, Aberdeen are the top four. Who's next? Hearts. Hearts. Like Hearts, Hearts, Hearts are always. Hearts are always in there. I think we've got a better squad than Hearts, mate. But it comes down to the I derbies. Do as well. and it comes down to I the do derbies. As well. Aye, the derbies and the other games, you know. So I would say fifth's unacceptable, but you know. See, see if you gave me fifth in, in the Scottish Cup, I'd bit your hand off. But mate, I, I'd take twelfth in the Scottish Cup. Do you know I, what I mean? Just yeah, I, obviously no, but I. But it's it's one of those ones. Like personally, I think we should be aiming to finish minimum at a minimum fourth. <clears throat> yeah, I think that I think that's realistic as well. I think we have to be in mind like like what we're saying as well. There's obviously other good teams in the league I, as well. Like let's let's know sort of. You know, be unrealistic. Like Aberdeen no. are a decent side. Yeah, they had a bit of shaking season last season and that, but they're a good side, mate. Uh, I don't think they'll be as good under Stephen Glass as they were under McInnes, though. I, I uh, think obviously St. I... St. Johnston. Aye, St. Johnston fancy themselves this year as well, probably for a high finish, uh, at least top six or higher than they did six last year. 
and obviously Aberdeen and that are, I mean, Aberdeen Hearts, Motherwell are hit and miss for me. I don't think they'll be up to much. Um, right, anyway, mate, let's jump ahead to who's your player to watch this season? Who's going to have a breakout season? Who do you think is going to be one of our top players this season? Last season, you could argue it's probably Kevin Nisbet. Um, is there anybody that you think this year is going to be good? Anyone you're excited to see, obviously? I'm excited to see Daniel Mackay. Um, I think he offers us something a wee bit different. Um, and mm. Josh Doig, Josh Doig as well. I'm excited to see how he kicks on. Uh, so the, And I think Stevie Bradley as well. I was really impressed with him on Friday, like I mentioned. Mm-hmm. So I think, I mean, I'm going to throw Cal McGuinness in again. So the four that I mentioned who are class on Friday, I think I'm really excited to see this season. I think, I think we've just got the makings of a quality season, mate, for those four players. If they can, if they, I don't know if Bradley will be in and about it that often, but I, the four of them, I'm really excited. I think they'll be, they'll be some of the players that I'm looking forward to watching this year. Mm-hmm. I think for me, I think I'm looking forward to seeing probably Boyle again. I'm looking forward to seeing Boyle. I think he was good at the start of last season, then he sort of came off it a little bit. And then obviously he had a, a strong finish at the towards the end of the season. Mm. Uh, he's had a decent preseason as well. I think I think our next year it will be down to a lot of our big players. I mean, if Nisbet stays, obviously Nisbet, Boyle, um, Doidge. I mean, I think Cadden will have play play a big part. I know he's injured at the moment, and that I seen that earlier this morning. But I think for us to have a solid season next season, like our big players will need to step up at the right times and at the right moments, like they can't go hiding. Uh, mm. I think that'll be really vital in terms of our success next season. But I like, as I said earlier, I like the look of Porteous. I'd like to see if he can sort of like not focus as much on like half an opposition <laughs> and focus more on like cancelling out any like silly mistakes and that he's got like just mature a little bit. We're looking forward to seeing him and obviously how Matt Macy and that gets on in the big games as well. I'm looking forward to seeing him. I think um, um, we we Jake Doyle Hayes. I've not I never mentioned him, but I think he. Can potentially mm-hmm. stake a wee claim in that squad. Um, Jack Ross has obviously brought him in for a reason, so hopefully he's going to use him. And I think he'll, I think he'll do all right. I think he's good uh, depth and defensive mid for Gogic if Gogic is injured or whatever. So I think I and he's another one that we could potentially add to that list. I have not seen much of him to be honest with you, mate. I don't know enough about him to really say anything. I've never, I've never seen him play before. Eh? Mm. Um. Right, let's jump to some transfer window talk. I seen I, I dare want to say it, but I seen a rumor that apparently Hibs are still very interested in Lee Griffiths. I, I did. Hope, pers- oh no! <laughs> nah, hope not. do you know what? See, before all that trouble and that came about, um, um, I was up for it and I thought, yes, like bring him home. Like this is going to be a good season for him. But now, like, I would take him back. Just you know, he signed a one-year deal with Celtic. You know, I know next season when his one year deal's over and that there'll be rumours sniffing about him coming to Easter Road and that like for me, no anymore. I'd rather have Shankland. I know a lot of folk didn't like Shankland, but mm. uh, because a lot of folk don't think think that he hasn't proved himself since he came up to the Premier League. But I mean he's playing with Dundee United, they've not got a lot of playmakers to put, you know, chances on for him. Um I'd love to see him play him in front of Scott Allen. You know, Hi. threading those balls through, I think that would be good. Obviously, it might be a little bit of an unrealistic target because they'd probably be looking for a six-figure th- uh, sum for them. Um, I think that. I I think I think even Cummins, I like Cummins. I know he's had his time at the club and that, but the boys are goal scorer. Eh? Uh, but as I said a couple couple seasons ago. Uh, sorry, a couple of um, podcasts ago, if he was to come, it'd have to be on like a five-year deal or something. He'd need to really commit to the club because right. it wouldn't be a step. It wouldn't be a stepping stone on anything better for him, I don't think. Um, but I, 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 what do you think, mate? What sort of players are you thinking would 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 come in to help the squad out? Uh, I, I think we need another striker, which I don't know who that is. Um, mm-hmm. I'd take I'd take Shaquan, but I think. I it's good. it all depends on who goes really. Eh? Like I think if this bit goes, shit, uh, if, and that's a big gap to fill. Shanklin's mm. probably probably the answer there. I would say. Um, I think we need another centre back. Um, and I think Jamie McCart would be the answer there. I would like to see him come to Hibs. Uh-huh. Um, it's hard. I think we need another right back as well. 
Uh, I agree with that. Because Cadden's out for six weeks, man. We need somebody who's going to be competition for um, again. I've heard with with agreed personal terms with Odafin for Hamilton, so I would take him. He's a good player. Um, right. And it's I, I I don't know where else we need to strengthen, mate. Maybe maybe another. Can I'm wanting a, a all over the park. <laughs> maybe another left back purely because Stevenson's getting on, but. Darren McGregor, I think, uh, Darren McGregor proved that he didn't need to play that many games to be effective in a Hibs team. So I think Stevenson's fine, but he's coming towards him and McGregor are coming towards the end of their career. So probably need to start looking at bringing in. I think Stevenson's players. still got a season in him. Aye, I would say I think so. Stevenson's still got a season in him. Like, um, I for me, I think definitely we need a striker. I think Bradley, obviously that uh, Bradley Young will be in and around the squads, but I think that. Another, especially for Europe, for Europe and that if we do progress, I think we're going to need another like household name. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we'll definitely need that. And another centre back is vital, I think as well. And I, I think right back is pretty weak as well. I like I like McGinn, but I'm, I don't know how I feel about Cadden playing right back. Um, I think he's more attacking than he is defensive. So mm-hmm. I'm not sure. What players do you think need to go out, mate? I think we've kind of covered this before, eh? Um, for me, I think Halberg's the obvious one. I think that he'd probably like to go play football full time somewhere else. Nice. Um, I think that'd be a good fit for him and us. Um, anyone else that comes to mind? Uh, Trey Wright, punt. Would well, you know game a season to try? See what it's like. Nah, punt him now. I would say um, he's one of Jack Rossi's signings, though, so I ain't gonna persist to him. But I'd I'd get rid of him. Aye. Hasn't he, hasn't he done it enough for us? Or hasn't he, hasn't he done it at all? Did that one good game against Rangers, and that was it. Um, mm-hmm. Try and who else? There. Um, Malin was another one that I probably would have said he probably needs to leave to play football, but he left last week. So, aye, um, Malin. Malin's obvious one. I'd like to have kept him. I think that he offers. I think that I don't think we really tapped into his potential a lot. Nah, I think I there is. A, I think he's a good player. I just don't think. I don't know why he obviously didn't show it in training and that. So there's no excuses. Eh? like if you want to be there, you'll you'll make an effort. Um, so I can understand why folk might think, you know, they can they can see why he's left. Um, Aye, there's not really anyone else in that squad that I would say probably get rid of. Um, I wouldn't say so. I think we're going to need a big squad if we if we do make Europe. We're definitely going to need a big squad, mate, because there was times last year when we had the few injuries that the bench looked paper thin. Can we need... I think we need good squad players that can play but are more suited for the bench. So, like, I think... Because, like I, like I said oh, months ago on the podcast, like, Halberg's mm-hmm. not, going to, not going to come off the bench and score a goal, really. Yeah, I know um, what you mean. So we need, we need somebody like that. Scott Allen coming back, though, is a big, is a big um, answer to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I, like we saw on Friday, mate, he's only got sixty minutes in him mainly. So, uh, and I think I don't think it's fair to put all that pressure on him either, nah. like considering what he's been through in that. So I, I think would, some other players will need to step up and share a bit of responsibility there. I would like another. I would like some. Either there maybe is someone in the squad who can fill that gap, but can if players go out, we're going to have to replace them. Like Tom James just left yesterday, and he's he would probably be a good squad right back. I know he's. I know there's a lot of Hibs fans that didn't like him, but I think he would have been a good option for the bench. So mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the squad that we've got just now. Um, I think we just need a few extras, and probably just need to shift the the couple remaining deadwood that are there. I, I, I agree with that, mate. I agree with that. Um, right, let's jump on a kit numbers, mate, for this uh, this episode. Aye. So we never done it last week because we were reviewing the Arsenal game. So I'll run through 20 and 21. Um, 20 is a bigger sure. list than 21. So I'll start with 20. Uh, we've had Kenny Miller, David Zatelli, Alan Dempsey, Jamie McCluskey, Sam Morrow, Stephen Fletcher, John Rankin, Paul Hanlon, David Stevens, Tom Taiwo, Brandon Barker, and Gail Bagiramana. Some of those uh, players. Some of good those pronunciation players. on the last name, by the way. <laughs> I, 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 I just, went with, I just went with what I thought it sounded. <laughs> Uh, ah, that was class. Uh, you go first, mate. Um, I'll probably go with uh, Stephen Fletcher from that list. Yeah, I think he yeah. was he was um, one of my favourite strikers at Easter Road. So 
Aye, we'll go with him. Aye, he was a good number nine, I thought, for Hibs. Um, yeah, I, I think he played I well liked him both. better as a number nine. He's done well in both numbers, come to think it. He probably did, mate. You probably did. Um, I remember my brother. We we actually we went to hospitality, and we went to meet the players and that. And Fletch, Fletcher, he he'd had a bad game, so he had a better stormer, and he didn't come out, so we missed him. And we got talking to one of the lasses behind the desk, and she said, "Oh, come round at the next the next home game and that, and I'll organise for you to meet Stephen Fletcher." And they're like, "Sign your tops and that, eh?" So we were like, "Oh, brilliant!" So got in contact with him and that. And the next home game, we went round and we went in after and that, and he came out, and oh, he was brilliant. still a bit peaked. He was still a bit peed off in that because I didn't think he scored that game. Hmm. So he was a bit raging. And then he came out in that A and he signed my brother actually had Fletcher Nine on the back of his top. Oh, so he signed the number nine signed the number nine in that. And then a uh, couple couple of days later, we, Christy, my brother, he had the top over his computer chair in his um his room and the pen was like still drying and things like that. And his mate Kerr came round and they were like mucking about in that A and he put his hand on the number nine oh, no. to paste it on the hang. And he smudged all the signature, and the signature just transferred over to his mate Kerr's hand. <laughs> it was pretty, it was funny, like, eh? but uh, it's just a, a story that sticks in my mind. Um, Jesus, that's not a pretty list, is it? Um, I, new, I'll, I'll, I'll go John Rankin. I like John Rankin. Yeah, I thought he was club, all right. New club captains there. We've not mentioned him. Aye, I, I know. Uh, better number four, I think. Eh? Don't, Aye. don't, don't know much. I'm at a twenty, mate. Nah, Aye, I'll, I'll go John Rankin. John Rankin was all right. <laughs> Aye. Uh, so we'll move on to number 21. Um, this one's very short and a lot of keepers. So we've had uh, Matthias Jack, Mark Libra, Matthias Kuodumbe, Jonathan Bailey, Andy McNeil, Graham Smith, Kalamantle, Sean Murdoch, Ross Laidlaw and Darnell Johnson. I am going for uh, Doombe. I'm going for Doombe as well. Aye. He, was he, was, he was a better number 14, but Doombe, uh-huh. out of that list. Matty Jack, I saw him, but I was too young to remember seeing him, so that's the only reason uh-huh. I'm going to put him in. He was there no. just as I started going to Easter Road, but he was just about to leave, so. Right. Oh, yeah. Right, last section, mate. Listeners' questions. Let's jump on it. Jack, um, friend of the podcast, says, what are the minimum expectations for this season? Uh, for me, uh, for me, third in a cup. I think I think we've covered this. I would say minimum minimum I would accept is probably fourth and cup fight cup cup semi final. Ah, you've got to get yeah, you've bit, got bit, to get cra- to bit crap, bit crap, but I I think I just think that the, the I think that the league's going to be stronger this year and I think we need to be realistic in terms of where we're at and that and like we're building something. I, and I, if, I, if we I, do I think... progress in Europe. Aye. I think minimum minimum we do need to get to Hamden. But aye, and then we we'll take it for there. It's, it's one game at a time, but aye, minimum Hamden. I agree. Aye. Right, we'll go with Lewis McKinnon, friend of the podcast, uh, with Ross saying he wants at least two in before the start of the season. Who would you drop from the team for new players coming in? Uh, to wow. be honest with me, I don't know what our number, our starting eleven is going to be next year. Yeah, I think so thir- bit- Thursday will be an indicator for that. I am a bit hesitant to, to to really say. Obviously, if Shanklin came in, I'd probably I'd like to see him. Uh, unrealistic. Let's say we sign Shanklin. I'd put him in the team. I'd like to see him and Nisbet up front together. See what they're like. Aye. Just drop Dodge for a get. Obviously, Dodge is you know recovering phase COVID and that. Eh? So if I could on Thursday have Shanklin in the team, I'd chuck him up front <laughs> with Kev and see how they got on. Aye. Um, I think that would be a really fiery partnership. Like a lot of goals, a lot of speed. Um, mm-hmm. I think they bounce off each other too and make each other better. Um, who else could potentially come into the squad? I mean, if McCart if McCart comes in, who are you dropping? <sighs> Mate, I know who I would drop, but he's a new club captain. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's Ken. That's that's personal prejudice against him. Like, I don't think let's, he's let's, let's quickly chat about that, mate. What's your okay. thoughts on Hanlon? Obviously, like on the podcast in the last couple of years, like when think well, in a couple of years, because we're going to going to be gone for five months, but. On the podcast, we've been a, quite critical of Hanlon and, and time's gone by. Yep. Um, and obviously, we can thank him for our day out at Hamden because he did step up and score the equaliser against Hearts. You know, he's done immense things for this club. He stuck by us when times were tough. Um, 
he is Hibs through and through. He's a Hibs fan, things like that. I think my issue with Hanlon is I just don't see him as assertive as like a Scott Brown type of character. And obviously that's not his personality. I'm no one to me go out and half fucking shout and scream. But, you know, I just, I just, there's been too many times we've been going in trailing at half time, losing to Hearts or losing to Celtic Rangers. And we come out and we see the same rubbish. You know, I like somebody to step up and say, look, this isn't happening. Let's get a grip of this game. You know, that's the type of, that's the type of captain I personally like. And I just don't, I just don't know if Hanlon's got a nasty streak to him. That would be my only objective, object, sorry, objection to Hanlon, is I don't know if he's got a nasty streak in him. He sort of, you know, for, first first ten minutes of a game or a derby or something or whatever, like can just go right through Morelos and let him Ken he's in a game, mm-hmm. Ken or pull his shirt or Ken just be a bit, just be a bit dirty, like Ken. You seen that um, Chiellini in the final of the Euros, Ken. Sterling's up, uh, no Sterling, um, Saka, Saka's away there, by the way, if he doesn't get past him, and just to grab his shirt and pull him back, like, Ken, that's just, taking one for the team, and it's just showing, ah, Ken, that, 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 that's a captain, and a, dirt, a bit dirty as well, like, I, I think he need that, and I, do, I don't think he has that, but I think he's always got other qualities in that, that have seen him, and a lot of fans do as well, so, obviously, if it wasn't Hanlon, who, who else was it going to be? Doesn't that's the that's the that's the, the fund, that's the fundamental problem at Hibs, mate. With no with no leaders in that team, Ken. The, mm. and, and if we're one 0 down in a cup final, there's not one player on that park that's going to be like, right, get your finger out your arse. Ken, that's, yeah, like a John McGinn, yeah. And the, and that's my problem with Hanlon being the captain. It's not, and I, I think he's a better than average footballer. I I don't need mm-hmm. I don't rate him as highly as some do. Um, but Ken, it's he's he's only the captain because we had no other options. Like you kind of get to McGregor who plays four games a year, kind of get to Stevenson who who is our second choice left back, kind of get mm-hmm. to Portis because he's still twenty years old and is. It looks like he's finally shaking off these silly mistakes that he's doing. But time will tell with that. But Ken, you've you've no other option, and that's my and that's my issue with the thing. We should have mm-hmm. kept Bar- we should have kept Bartley. And Bartley's a Bartley's a leader. He wasn't the best football uh, in the world, but he, he'll get you in a game. Just so, in the players consistently. Nah. I mean, I'll support Hanlon. Hibs captain, I'll support you. But you've got a, you've got a lot to do to sell it to me. I, I think we'll just we'll need to get behind them. I can see I, your frustration with the cup with the, with the cup final. I, um, I'd like I'd I'd prefer it but if we're one not doing a cup final, I'd like to be a bit more vocal and not not as oh, passive, absolutely. you know. But absolutely. I, as we say, I'm I'm gonna get behind them. Yeah, I've right. had my frustrations with him, but I'll, I'll get behind him in that and, you know, obviously cheer on the team. And if he's got a lead us, then let's go for it. Right. Um, Paul McGinn, vice captain. Again, that's he's not I'd really have probably gave Scott, I'd have probably gave that to Scotty Allen. Been at the club for a long time, knows what it's like. Um, yeah, for me, it would have been Scott right. Allen. I'd have given it to Porteous if it was me, but obviously, Jack yeah, that's Rocky, a good shout. Can it give him a wee bit of an incentive, like, oh, you're potentially future club captain, can maybe stay? But I like it, like you say, mate. We'll get behind them and hopefully they lead us to a decent season. Yeah, that's a good shout, mate. Right, last question. So, do you want to answer Lewis's first question there? I just, I would say Shanklin and McCart if we could, but I'm to be honest with you, Lewis, I'd a bit early to say it's hard because if he's saying about dropping, I would need there's nothing really I'd drop. Can nah, I, like if we bring in McCart, we're gonna to have to change the way we play. Bring in Shanklin, mm-hmm. it looks like he's going one up top this season as well. so it's a hard one. Only because Dodge has been out, eh? I think, right, right. I think I think it was, it's good that we play two up front. I like two up front. Right. So, um, I mean, obviously, if we bring in McCart, we're going to have to adopt our system. Bring in an R striker, we're going to have to, to adopt our system. So, I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure who I would drop, to be honest. So, the second question from Lewis is, do you feel that Hib should try and bring in a bigger named player or someone that we don't know as much? So, someone who doesn't really have a, a household name. I, mean, I think to excite fans and sell tickets, you pro- probably, you know, will have to bring in a big name. Aye, you will. Aye, but then you, then again, if you look at like Marciano and Joe mm-hmm. Newell and can they were any household names before, but it's worked. Like it's, can you could bring in both. Can you could bring in a, a big name player, but then also bring in somebody that no one really mm-hmm. knows. Can so mm-hmm. I think that's what he's done with Daniel Mackay. Nobody really knew who he was unless you followed the championship. 
So I mean, just for well, yeah, I think he's brought in quite a lot of players that don't aren't well known. But I mean, I think the thing is like if you're going for Europe, or you're trying to progress to the group stages of Europe, Europe, and let's say you bring in Lewis Vaughan or you bring in Lee Griffiths, like what you're bringing, would be more happy with? You're bringing Lee Griffiths I mean? every time. Aye, aye, you're right. Or Shank, yeah. or Shankland, or Lewis Vaughan. Aye. Yeah, I mean, personally, I'd bring Lewis Vaughan in, but that's uh. I, I think there's that. a lot. I think there's. I think. I think what have been bad at in recent years is not progressing academy players. Like what? What happened to Ollie Shaw? I mean, all you used to hear about in the academy was Ollie Shaw scoring goals, right. and then it's like we produce that for Ross County, sort of reap the benefits, I guess. Like for me, we need to bleed more players at that end. I know I've done it with uh, Porteous this past couple of years. Obviously, Josh Stoig as well, which is good to see. I'm really pleased with. But we used to be outstanding for you know producing players. I'd like to see a little bit more of that this season, and it's good that you know I wouldn't bring someone else in to sort of like um, I guess suffocate or nullify Brad. Aye. Yeah, that Brad the Young's chances of getting a shot. Ken. Bye. Right, we'll see what happens, mate. But it's exciting nonetheless. I'm looking Aye. forward to the new season and that, mate. We will wrap it up there. I will. We'll li- we've got. Aye, um, go, mate. We've got a, a, f- a friend of mine coming on next week, Simon McKenzie, who's uh, one of the Hibs girls coaches. So that'll be good to chat to him about uh, the Hibs girls and his expectations for the season as well. So make sure to check. That I excite him. Excited, mate. Looking forward to that. As always, this will be on Recast. Now, guys, if you're on the Recast app or if you don't know about the Recast app and you're listening on Spotify or listening on YouTube, we appreciate it. Um, However, if you want to support the club, if you listen on Recast, the the money goes towards towards Hibs. Um, So you'd be as well as listening on there because it gives Hibs money, which is great for them and great for us and great for everybody. So everybody wins. Uh, So we'd really encourage you to do that. It takes two seconds to just literally sign up for it. You just need to put in your email address, create yourself a password and you're in. You can watch our videos. You can watch long banger videos. You can watch actual Hibs official videos on there as well. Um, That's a good way just to support the club. If you want... um, this will also be available on Spotify. It'll be available on YouTube. If you could give us a subscribe on YouTube, that would help out massively as well, just with algorithms and things like that. Um, and if you are heading to the European game on Thursday, have a brilliant time. We hope you really enjoy yourselves. Um, aye. Anything else, Charlie? That's it for aye. We'll see you next week. Aye. Cheers, guys. And he told me when he watched the history.